Hi and welcome back to the channel. Around 7 of 2022, F1 comes to the south of France for the Monaco Grand Prix. This is the crown jewels in F1's calendar and it really is the glitz and glamour of Formula 1. Monaco is a sovereign city state on the French Riviera and for this weekend they call it the Billionaire's Playground. With an area of just 0.78 square miles and a population just under 40,000, Monaco is one of the densest countries in the world. Monaco is smaller than Central Park, which is located in New York City. However, even with a country that small, it's still home to just under 13,000 millionaires. Almost one out of three people there are millionaires, with most of the drivers on the grid calling Monaco home as well. Most of the drivers on the grid live in Monaco and actually live a stone's throw away. They all have apartments there and live there during the off season. And during this race weekend, they usually walk or take scooters to the track because they live so close. The Circuit de Monaco is a street track and as such, it goes around the existing roads of Monaco. The erecting and the production of the actual circuit takes around six weeks around the small and narrow streets of Monaco. Most of the structures are actually built off site and then brought into the site with trucks due to the nature of the country being so tight on space. It made its first F1 debut back in 1950. The track is incredibly narrow and actually iconic. Nelson Piquet memorably said that driving around Monaco is like trying to ride a bicycle in the living room. Despite that, it's a challenge that all drivers love to face every year. It forces the drivers to put their skills really on the limit and it rewards millimeter accuracy. Overtaking on this street track is notoriously hard, but with these new 2022 cars, let's see if overtaking is a possibility this year round. But one thing for sure is the track is really unforgiving and any mistake and you'll be in the barrier. So drivers will be on the limit and on the edge every lap. The race takes place over 78 laps of this 3.3 kilometer track in Monte Carlo on Sunday and this is the weekend schedule. During the 2021 race we saw Charles Leclerc put it on pole but unfortunately he crashed out at the end of qualifying and that meant that others couldn't improve their time. On his way to the grid on Sunday unfortunately he did have a drive shaft issue and he unfortunately had to retire before the race even started so he didn't get to start his home race. This meant that Max started on P1 and he led from start to finish. This race was also where we saw the longest pit stop in F1 history. This is when Bottas came in for his stop but unfortunately the wheel cross threaded on the nut and that wheel didn't come off for his pit stop. He had to retire out the car and the team eventually got that wheel off back in the factory a couple of days after. He was running in P2 at the time and was on for a podium position as well. His teammate Hamilton also had a bad race as well. He unfortunately got stuck behind Gasly during most of the race and couldn't pass him on these narrow streets. Last year's race is also where we saw Lando lapping his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. Netflix's series Drive to Survive actually covered Monaco in episode 2. If you haven't watched my reaction to episode 2 already, I've linked it in the description below but it was Max who went on to win his first Monaco Grand Prix and it was Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris joining him on the podium. Back-to-back -back races as last weekend was the Spanish Grand Prix. If you haven't seen my weekend review already for that, I've linked that in the description below. But in such a quick turnaround, there isn't much to report on from last week to this week. But teams up and down the grid will be carrying on their testing from the new parts they bought in Spain and seeing if they work here in Monaco as well. I'll be doing a full video on all the upgrades that teams have bought up and down the grid later on. So make sure you click the subscribe button below to make sure you're informed when I upload that video. The one bit of news coming out from the Spanish Grand Prix weekend was that Sebastian Vettel had his bag stolen. He had his bag stolen outside a hotel in Barcelona and then he attempted to track down the thieves using a tracker on his Apple iPhone. He did this by riding a scooter through the city and for me that just brings flashback of what happened in Australia when he took a scooter around the track after the end of free practice. He had his headphones in the bag and tried to track that down through his phone. The Aston Martin driver found their headphones but couldn't find the bag. It seems that the thieves threw the headphones but then kept the bag to obviously throw the scent off them. It's unclear if they spotted Vettel beforehand and obviously threw the headphones away. So no one knows really what happens, but he has reported the incident to the police in Spain. One thing that may spice up this race weekend is the weather. The weather forecasted is for rain this weekend. If this is the case and we do get rain for this race weekend, this should make the race even more challenging, like it wasn't already as drivers navigate the narrow streets of Monaco. The last wet race in Monaco took place in 2016. Finally, Leclerc, Sainz, Alonso, Gasly and Stefano Domenicali, the CEO of F1, all took part in a charity football match last Tuesday. They all took part in this charity football match on Tuesday ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Join me as usual for my weekend review on Monday where I'll be discussing what happened over the weekend, as well as giving the drivers a rating out of 10 for their whole weekend. 
Follow me on Twitter below where I'll be live tweeting the live sessions as well as on TikTok where I post more regularly. Make sure you click the subscribe button below for more F1 news, analysis and opinion. If you've liked the video, click the like button below. This will really help the YouTube algorithm.